Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here with another Back to Basics guide for you. Now I get asked for a lot of questions with regards to the paints I use and various additives and brushes and that sort of stuff. And I've been asked that much that it's time to do a video on it. So I thought we'd do a Back to Basics guide video on the paints, brushes, additives, all that sort of stuff. Just go through them so you know we've got a good resource I can point people to when they ask questions. Okay, let's start with the paints. Okay, what we're going to do, cover in this video, just to quickly go over it, is we're going to cover the paints, the the type of paints, the what shall it, the uses of them. We're going to look at brushes as well. You know, types of brushes, how you use them, what they're good for. We're also going to look at various additives, and then we'll have a quick look at spray paints and primers, and I'll have a quick chat about that. But hopefully, by the end of it, you should have a solid knowledge of you know what paints you need, what brushes you need for what various different terrain jobs and that sort of thing. And hopefully, you know. It'll help you. Right, let's start with the big paints. Okay, the majority of paint I use when I'm doing terrain is stuff like this. Okay, now this is emulsion paint in the UK. It is matte emulsion. It's indoor interior wall paint. Now in the US they call this latex paint. Now this is important. If you're watching a, a tutorial in the US and they say buy latex paint and you're in the UK, don't. In the UK we have a a latex paint and basically it's, it's liquid rubber yeah and it, the last thing you want to do is put that on your train so in the UK go with emulsion yeah in the US go with latex paint around the world just look for your common you know indoor interior paint yeah it's got to be matte you don't want gloss or satin finish or eggshell or anything like that Okay, now uh, you can buy these in various swatch sizes, as you probably already know, yeah. But typically, a one litre can is enough to do, well, I found it's enough to do a six by four foot board base colour plus all your terrain bases and still have about a quarter left over, yeah. So if you're doing a full on board project with buildings, you want to be looking at this side, size. If you're only doing what you call it, smaller pieces. Okay, then you want to be looking at things like these. Yeah, now these are exactly the same paints, but they are tester pots. You know, you can buy them for a quid. Yeah, and basically they're what, 100 mils, 80 mils. These are 75 cheapo Wilco's. Yeah, but they, I think they cost about a pound. Yeah, now if you're doing a terrain set, say a set of buildings or something like that, you'll probably find you'll need two, two tubs of your base color and then one of each of your, your other main colors, etc. Yeah, but, you know, it's volume. They're still the same sort of paint, it's just the volume you need. Don't go near this if you do full-on tables. Now, so, those are our basic emulsions. Yeah, moving on, we move over to things like the acrylics, okay? And, obviously, you've got the professional stuff from Galleria. Yeah, now, this is artist acrylic. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, but it is damn good. Yeah, now, these are Winsor Newtons. Uh, these are Reeves, okay, and then moving on, yeah, you get into things like the Crawford and Blacks, okay, now these I got from uh, a cheapo bargain shop, yeah, and there's a lot of uh, acrylic paint ranges out there, okay, now you don't have to go with the most expensive, yeah, if you can find the right colour, yeah, and now there's no guarantee that they'll have the right colour, but if you can find the right colour, then it's an acrylic paint. You know, your burnt umbers, your ochres, your sap greens, you know, all those sort of colours in a cheaper range. Then go for them, guys. I mean, right now in the UK, the cheapest uh, burnt umber you can buy per volume is Wilco's Craft Paint. Yeah, and this works out about 60p per 100 millilitres or something around that line. But it worked out the cheapest. I, I bought a load of them, but that's the only colour that they do that's of any real use beyond sort of like the primary colours like red, blue and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so you've got acrylic paints, yeah? Now, obviously the acrylics are slightly more expensive than the emulsions, yeah, but they give a better finish. Yeah, they're, they're nicer to work with, yeah? When I say a better finish, What's the, what's the best way of describing it? There's not that much difference in it, you know. You can be a bit arty-farty and say, I only use acrylics on my terrain. It depends on volume, really. 
you know, if you're only doing a few small pieces, acrylics are fine. You know, if you're doing large pieces, lots of polystyrene, that sort of stuff, lots of buildings, then go with the emulsions. Now, we've got those acrylics there. Yeah, so let's... Now, I should point out, yeah, that I haven't gone out and bought a set of things for this video yet. Basically, what I've done is I've just grabbed everything I've got in my watch or cupboard. So if I seem to have quite an eclectic range of things, it's just, it's the stuff I've picked up as we've gone along. And basically I've just come along and dumped it on my desk so you can all see it. So moving on with the acrylics, yeah, what you've got is things like these. Now these are acrylic pastes, okay? I've got a wide range of colours. Uh, I would never use these for bog standard painting terrain, yeah? There's two real purposes for these. Okay, one is when you're using things like uh, thinners, etc., making washes, yeah? Because it's a finer range, because it's an acrylic paste, there's, there's less of the acrylic in it and more of the pigment, so they make really good washes and that sort of stuff. The other situation is, watch it, if you want to do like flame effects and that sort of thing and you need a paint paste, typically people use oil, oil for those but you can use acrylic pastes as those. Right, caveats right now, I don't tend to use oil paints, you know, I have done in the past, I don't like them to be perfectly honest, I can get the same effects with other products so, you know, that's why I'm not talking about oil paints in this video. But these things, yeah, great for washes, great for that sort of stuff, okay, absolutely brilliant in fact. So, those are the basic paints, and what we're basically talking about, you know, actually emulsion is a type of an acrylic paint. Yeah, it's, you know, suspended in a similar medium, yeah. But basically, these are the sort of paints that we use for terrain building. The main things you need to consider is volume of paint, yeah. Uh, simply when it comes down to how many tubs do I have to buy for this project. Like I said, yeah, full bore. Full on table, you're going to need a can, you know, a proper litre. Yeah, beyond that, you start looking at the tubs, which really brings the cost down. Now, there are other paints that we use. Uh, obviously, you know, we've got the hobby paints. Now, straight off, I do not recommend these as base paints for terrain, with except one caveat. You know when your paints dry out, you know, and certain brands are far more known for this than others. When your paints dry out and they become unusable, yeah, you can get water in there, mash them up a bit and use them for terrain, yeah. They might not be good enough for your models, but they are certainly good enough for terrain. Now it may seem that, oh, oh I've only got one dry pot. If you're doing a project between a few of you or a club, you know, it's quite easy to have a bit of a, you know, a dried up paint call. You know, if, you, if you're going to throw it out, put, bring all the paints together and actually you can find you've got a reasonable amount of paint, you can do quite a bit with it. Okay, so don't discount your watch or your model paints when they get dried up. All it means is once they get dried up, they're ready for terrain projects. Now, where this stuff genuinely does come in handy with doing terrain is doing your, your fine detail work, basically doing the stuff it's designed for. You know, the little details, the accents, the little bit of washes, that sort of stuff. Yeah, because it is an ultra fine pigment, it's designed to do fine work. And whereas some of the bigger paints break down at really fine work, you know, the uh, uh, the pigments either they go a bit a bit cloudy sometimes. You know, when you're trying to get thin coats on and mixing them with water, these are designed to be mixed with water. You know, these emulsions really aren't designed to be thinned down. Okay, so if you do fine work, that sort of stuff, yeah, you want to be looking at your you know, you can use your hobby paints for that. But generally, you know, if you're doing terrain, don't use these as base paints. It's just not cost effective. It'll cost you an arm and a leg. So I think that pretty much covers, yeah, we've covered emulsion, we've covered the expensive acrylics, the cheap acrylics, we've covered the model paints, the pastes. Have we got any other paints around here? No, I haven't really got any other paints around here. So, right, let's move on. Let's talk brushes, right. Let me just quickly shove all these over there. I'm in the middle of doing a, a table, so everything's everywhere, and the wife's going to come in and kill me because I've got everything out. <sighs> right. Brushes. What's the best way of doing this? Show you my brushes, I think. Uh, come in. Do, 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 do. <laughs> yeah, brushes. More brushes. Hobby brushes. Terrain brushes. Right, so put the hobby brushes aside, you know about those. Right, let's have a look at terrain brushes.
It's all fun, isn't it? Right, let's get all these out and we'll go through them. Okay, I've actually got a new pack of these to show you as well. Aren't I professional? <laughs> okay guys, when it comes to terrain, your bog standard brush is going to be the one inch synthetic house brush. Okay, uh -huh. that needs cleaning. Yeah, uh, you can buy these in very cheap packs. Okay, now I highly recommend that you go for the no bristle loss packs. Yeah, they're, they're normally a quid or two more. The reason being, yeah, is we do a lot of dry brushing in terrain making. And when you're doing lots of dry brushing, you tend to lose these if you buy cheap brushes. And it's a pain in the backside, it really is, because you're constantly trying to pick things out and retouch the paintwork. So, yeah, if you're going to do a terrain project and you're going to go out and buy brushes for it, i.e. you haven't got any in the house, spend a quid or two more, buy uh, no bristle loss brushes. Yeah. Now, if you haven't got, what you call it, uh, no bristle loss brushes, what you can do, and I'm just wondering, is, yeah, like on these, what you can do is you can get a pair of pliers, yeah, and crimp the ferrule, yeah. It will make the, the bristles splay, perhaps an extra two or three millimetres, but we're doing it for bright, dry brushing, so that's actually an advantage. Okay, so if you're finding you're losing bristles, get a pair of pliers, yeah, squeeze this ferrule down, yeah, and that, that'll clamp on. Easy fix for you. Right, so, going back. So there are, what you call, these are our thin, thin, synthetic, these are our fake brushes. <laughs> okay, moving on, there's another type of brush you can get. Now, these are called pure bristles. Now, what this is, is th these sort of white fibres are either Chinese hog hair, yeah, i.e. pig hair, or uh, badger hair. Yeah, now, the watch what these are typically yeah pig hair now pig hair and badger hair differ from the synthetic stuff one they're real but two they absorb they absorb the watch what it, the the moisture these don't yeah these do so they soak it in so typically what I'd use is I will use these for things like PVAing and that sort of stuff because they are dirt cheap you can buy big packs of them for like a pound yeah and then you know once it gets to the stage where i can't really do much with them i you know they've got that much pva in or that much what you call it uh pigment that you know it's just not viable to use them as you know a brush anymore i can just throw them but they're great for dirty work because they're cheap and cheerful yeah so you'll find that the badger hair stuff is slightly softer than the hog's hair, and it's slightly more, you know, expensive. I'm guessing that's because you've got to be slightly braver to shave a badger than a hog. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, now, moving on, you can get stable hair decorators brushes. Yeah, very much like our, you know, our modeling, what you call it, our hobby brushes, which are stable hair. You can get decorators brushes that are stable hair. They are expensive. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't have any, yeah? You should only really be looking at purchasing them if you're doing a terrain studio and you're looking to do terrain full-time and looking for that perfect finish, yeah? Uh, for me, maybe one day when I've got lots of money, I'll buy a set, yeah, right now, I don't need them, so you don't need them. If you're, a, if you're putting yourself out as a professional terrain builder, yeah, then I'd consider go, going down that line. So that's the stable hairs. Now on top of that, we've got a few other thin, thin, fake brushes. That's going to be the word for this video, isn't it? Okay, now these come in kiddies paint, and they're obviously fake. I'm not even going to try and say it. Yeah, uh, these are cheap and cheerful, but they're really resilient. Uh, they give a really good, what shall it, smooth covering. They do tend to suffer from losing, what shall it, bristles once they get hammered a bit so you have to start consider you know crimping them with your pliers yeah as I've done and will do with the other brushes as you know I get to the stage where I need them yeah but they are really good for dry brushing they give a nice fine texture okay obviously you can cut them down for dry brushing oh when you're dry brushing yeah the lighter you want the look on the dry brush, yeah, the longer you want the bristles. So as you brush over it, less force is applied. The shorter the brush, 
the more brisk, the more force is applied, and therefore, you know, the the shorter brushes are better for dry brushing. Okay, but I've got a whole range of these. You know, I pick them up every so often, use them. Yeah, the kids use them, then I throw them away. Yeah, cheap and disposable, really nice. Yeah, so those those now. What else we got? These are stable hair brushes. Yeah. Okay, and you can pick up artist ones of these, yeah, packs. Now, the decorator's ones are quite expensive, yeah. You can pick up stable hair, what shall it, uh, art ones relatively cheap, cheaply, and you're going to be a. You're going to curse me for the state of my brushes, yeah. You know, you can get a pack with these sort of things in pretty cheaply. These are good for your fine detail work, for putting down washes, that sort of stuff, yeah. You don't want to be putting down base coats or any heavy work with this. You don't want to be working with PVA with these, really, okay, uh, because it'll knacker them up, and they are the more expensive. But like I said, you can get, you know, from your cheapo arts and crafts stores, you can get bulk sets of stable hair brushes, the small ones. The big ones, the decorators ones, are more expensive. Now moving on from brushes, there's a few other things, okay, now just quickly show you this, another common medium that we use for applying paint to terrain, yeah, is, what you call it, sponges, okay, now these came in the same set as these did, yeah, and basically they're just foam sponges on sticks, yeah, these are really good for getting nice smooth base coats on large flat areas, they're good for doing over brushing on large flat areas, mainly plastic kits really, where using these sort of brushes you would get the brush strokes. Yeah, the other thing that these are really good at is for stippling. Now, yeah, you know, you will have heard of, you know, if you're from the model community, you'll have heard of using, uh, what you call it, uh, foam for, for stippling. Yeah, and it literally is a matter of just ripping a few bits out to make it a bit uneven. Yeah. And then you've got a little stippling brush. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you know, take your paint, spread it out, da -da -da, a little like tappy, 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 wash it off when it gets a bit, you know, too gunked off, you can break it down. Yeah, and they're dirt cheap and they're a little bit easier than using bits of sponge. Yeah, to be perfectly honest, especially on terrain where you're doing lots and lots and lots. Yeah, so keep an eye out for these, they're really good additions. Now, obviously, you've we've got the sort of normal sponges, yeah, for getting paint down and ripping it apart, doing exactly the same slide. Yeah, this is just a scour sponge. Yeah, also, you can buy this sort of sponge. Yeah, now, it is, is it coral sponge, I think they call it. I bought this from an art shop, yeah, it was a quid for a massive pack of them. Now, I really like this sort of stuff, yeah, simply because, look at the textures. Yeah, when you're doing terrain, especially when you're stippling things like concrete or stippling the bottom of ponds and that sort of stuff, where you really need to get a ver variety of, of sort of textures and stippling patterns over a large area, you know, these pieces are great because you can literally work round them for different textures. You know, you've got your fines, you've got your courses, you know, and with a little bit of practice before you hit your terrain, yeah, you do brilliant work with these, especially stippling concrete. Yeah, really good for those. Right, so is that the brushes? Let me think. Covered those, covered those, covered those, covered those. Uh, quick talk about hobby ones. I mean, I've got all sorts of clay shapers and sculpting tools in here. Yeah. A good set of hobby brushes is handy, you know. It, they're good for getting into the small details that the larger ones sort of miss, etc. You know, they're, they're good for doing your, into your gaps, your fine detail work, etc. They have their place, but your workhorses are going to be these guys, to be perfectly honest. Right. I think that covers brushes. You just bang those all in there. Oh, quickly. Yeah. Also... Always have a toothbrush. Yeah. You know when you look at rocks and you see like little flecks of yellow where you get like little, you know, you have like the little yellow. It's not moss, is it? It's sort of, it, it's like moss. Is it? I, don't, I don't know what it is. But the dried little yellow patches that grow on rocks. Brushes are great for sort of, you know, dip it in, little water down, flicking it at. Yeah. And getting that pattern. Yeah. Uh, so... Keep one of those in your toothbrush. Have I actually done it? I haven't done a tutorial on that. I'll cover that in a tutorial, guys. I'll do that relatively soon so you can see what I mean. 
Right, let me put these away. But yeah, that's my basic brushes, guys. Like I say, I don't own the really expensive stable hair ones. I don't need them, I find. Yeah, I do tend to go through quite a few brushes. They go from, your brushes evolve. They start off as base coating brushes, you know, and detailing brushes, and then they evolve towards dry brushing brushes until they get to the stage where they're only really fit for slapping glue down. <laughs> yeah, but once out, and then you get to the stage where they're that solid, you can't do anything with them, and it's time to throw them, yeah, and bring in the new brushes. Yeah, so for me, brushes are always evolving, you know. I've always got a new pack on the go, a half-used pack on the go, an almost dying pack on the go, yeah. So I have a lot of brushes. Right, okay, additives. Right, let's talk about additives. Two of the most common additives as terrain builders that you will put into your paints. One, PVA glue, white glue, uh, the brand in the US is Elmer's, yeah, wood glue, yeah, my favourite PVA. Yeah, you can mix this in with your emulsion when you're doing base coats and that sort of stuff, and it acts as a sealing coat. So whereas you put, you know, instead of putting gluing your texture down, sealing it, then base coating, you can mix this in with your base coat, yeah, and then simply just seal the lot and base coat it at the same time. It does make the base coat a little lighter, yeah, when you're when the paint's mixed, but it does dry the same. Yeah, but there's there's a very slight difference. A very I won't say a glossy difference, but there is a very slight difference. But as base coats go, you're typically going over it with more colours and dry brushing it. It very rarely makes a difference. Okay, moving on from that, we have what do you call it? Uh, dish soap. Yeah, dish to turn washing up liquid in the UK. Yeah, this. Uh, one of the key ingredients of dish soap and how it makes the buddles is it, it's got something, uh, a, a flow aid in it, something that reduces the water tension and that helps the water spread. Now when you add a couple of drops into the, of this into your paint tubs as you mix it in, yeah, it will go a little bubbly, don't worry the bubbles will go, yeah, they settle, but when you mix it in you add that flow aid to the paint. And so if you've got a particularly, you know, craggy area to do, lots of gaps and, you know, uh, such as try to paint cork bark or something like that, or painting rocks with lots and lots of little gaps in it and that sort of stuff. Uh, lots of uh, clumps of rocks together. Put this in your paint and it will help the paint flow directly into, watch for it, into the areas. Another thing that you can mix to increase sort of like the flow of paint is hot water. So have literally a glass or a, watch for it, uh, a cup of hot water when you're painting. Use the hot water because the energy in the atoms in the hot water will carry the what you call it the the pigment further. It'll give you a slightly thinner coat, but it will carry the pigment further. Uh, there's videos on both the flow aids and that sort of stuff, and using hot water in the uh, quick tips yeah playlist. So if you want to check those out, go check them out. Now another additive that you can use, and it is really an additive, it's just a carrier, yeah, is acrylic thinners. Now I would typically use acrylic thinners with my pastes, yeah, to make washes and that sort of stuff. Basically acrylic thinners and, you know, thinners in general are liquids that when exposed to air slowly evaporate. Yeah, or well, not slowly, they evaporate quite quickly to be truthful. They evaporate a lot quicker than water. But what they allow you to do is, is mix with, you know, a pigment or an acrylic. Yeah, create a wash, put it down, that'll dry really quickly, which means that you can go back in and then add more washes and more detail rather than doing the sort of, if you use water, you've pretty typically got to wait a couple of hours for that to settle. Okay, so, you know, if you're doing washes, that sort of thing, you, and you want to sort of progress the washes, and you know, you're doing fine work, then you're looking at acrylic thinners, but generally, yeah, for my washes, I typically use water. There's videos on that, and there's more videos on washes coming up, guys. Okay, now going over to the more perfect, now this is, okay, this is bog standard, yeah, hobby craft stuff, this is, uh, you know, going slightly more professional, go full on professional, you go over to stuff like the Liquitex ranges and Windsor Newton stuff. Yeah, now this is Windsor Newton's acrylic flow improver. Yeah, uh, basically it does the same as that, but it doesn't make bubbles and it's really good at it and it's designed to work with acrylics. Yeah, it's expensive, that's about 
seven pound, but it goes a long way. It really does go a long way. Yeah, another one you can use is something called matte medium. Okay, now matte medium is basically a clear matte fluid. It's it's very much like a matte varnish, yeah, that you put in with your paint. Yeah. Now you know when we use a PVA, sometimes we use uh, quite a bit of paint on something, or perhaps sometimes uh, we're doing washes, and they come out a bit glossy, a bit shiny. Yeah. This is the stuff that you put in with it. Yeah. To to knock it back, and it only takes a couple of drops. As I said, it is expensive. Yeah. But it is a much professional finish. Okay. So you've got, when it comes down to additives, you know, you've got the cheap stuff, you've got the sort of middle of the line stuff, and then you've got the top end stuff. If you're a professional terrain builder, you really should be looking at this sort of stuff, yeah? If you're making club stuff for yourself, for the club, you know, that sort of stuff, for you and your mates, yeah, stick with these, eh? Yeah, you don't need to go this expensive. Now, they are the main additives I add, yeah, to my paints. Now, there are other additives, I don't really use them, so I don't feel qualified to sort of talk about them, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, so those are the main additives, and I do perfectly well with this. You know I do tons of terrain, and you know you know the, how my terrain looks, so if, if I can do that with this, then you can, guys, okay? Now, typically, a lot of the stuff that you see on my channel, I use this stuff for, okay? So don't worry. Right, finally, yeah, a uh, quick chat about spray paints and primers. Okay, now very quick chat because this is a massive topic all in its own, but it deserves to be acknowledged as part of terrain paints and brushes and technique, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So what I've got here is, straight off, I've got Halford's Grey Primer, yeah. Uh, it's a standard metal plastic wood primer, yeah. It's sold for cars, yeah. Halford's is a car parts supplier in the UK. Uh really good absolutely brilliant i use it on the models the place where you're going to be looking to use things like primers is when you've got mdf kits when you've got uh plastic kits you don't really want to use sprays anywhere near polystyrene you can get polystyrene safe sprays but that's beyond the remit of this video right now yeah uh so yeah if you've got plastic kits and that sort of stuff you know uh, Battle Zones, GW, Pegasus Kit, uh, who else is doing plastic kits right now? I <sighs> can't think, off the top of my head I can't think. Also MDF kits, yeah they need priming as well, yeah otherwise you know they soak up paint and that sort of stuff. So you know these are, this is my bulk primer, my go-to primer. Now you can step it up for a, a, you know, a quid or two more and start to go and look at like model primers and you've got things like the Army Painter ones, you've got GWs, I mean pretty much everyone does their own primer. Yeah, uh, these are, this is Model Mate's light grey primer. I like this primer to be perfectly honest, it's a really smooth finish for terrain. Yeah, and it seems to work well on, on wood and MDF and that sort of stuff. Yeah, so on top of that, going further on, obviously you've got spray paints, you've got, you know, various uh, manufacturers range of spray paints and you've got these I mean this is plastic coat yeah this is a cheap one I think the cans cost about one or two quid but it's good going over a primer you know it is a spray paint so if you're doing large areas of plastic kit sometimes you know plastic and, MD and watch that MDF kits really struggle with brush strokes brush strokes showing through yeah, so quite often, you know, for your base coating, you'll be looking at using spray paints. Now, this is, of course, if you're not airbrushing. Now, if you're airbrushing, that's a whole different topic, yeah, and, you know, most people don't have an airbrush, yeah. Don't go out and buy an airbrush for terrain, you know, if you're just doing a couple of sets, you know, <laughs> buy it for your models. Unless you're a professional terrain builder and then, you know, you sort of need one. But the vast majority of people are brush and sponge people, yeah? So when you need to get that sort of airbrush effect, that spray effect, yeah, it's often cheaper to go for, the, like, the spray paints. So, guys, uh, we have covered the types of paints I use, how, how they use, where we use them, all that sort of stuff. We've looked at the brushes, what type of brushes, what they're good for. Yeah, we've looked at additives, we've looked at sprays and that sort of stuff. So I think I've pretty much covered 
most of the major questions I get asked, which, you know, I'm quite pretty happy with, to be perfectly honest. Uh, moving forward, well, I mean, I can't. Moving forward, yeah, at some point in the future, I'll cover oil paints and that sort of stuff. But like I say, I don't really use them, so I don't feel qualified. With regards to the airbrushing stuff, I'm still getting used to it. So once again, I don't feel qualified to, to talk about how to use airbrushing. Yeah, to make wonderful effects on terrain because I'm still learning, you know, a lot of the times I'm doing my airbrushing on experimental pieces and test pieces. Yeah, I'm still sticking to the stuff I know for my terrain because I know how to get good effects with them and I know I can rely on them. Last thing I want to do is like, you know, make a mistake whilst I'm learning to airbrush on a decent piece. And I'd also suggest the same for you guys. Oh, right, let me take a deep breath. How long have we been going for? Oh, about 30 minutes. That's a good video. Right, guys, uh, as always, first off, yeah, loads of good terrain guys and loads of professional model builders and that sort of stuff follow my channel. So, guys, if you've got anything to add to this video yet, yeah, throw it in the comments. If you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. Remember, guys, I, I always answer my comments. Well, almost always. It's getting a bit iffy with a few topics, but on this one, yeah, you'll get an answer, guys. As long as you ain't asking stupid stuff like what pizza to have. Yeah, someone did, never mind. Uh, like it if you like it, share it if you're feeling good. Uh, and as always, and I always feel awkward like this, but you know, if you really like what I do, guys, you know, check out the Patreon link and consider throwing me a book a month. No pressure whatsoever yet, but if you do, I really appreciate it. Anyway, I've got to crack on with painting because that's what I was supposed to be doing instead of talking on the video. So, have a good day, guys. All the best, yeah? Terra. <laughs>